I think that's, uh, can you hear me all right? <clears throat> okay, thank you so much, Kate. Uh, yeah, I just flew down here this morning. The guy in the seat next to me in the plane said, are you staying in Vancouver long? I said, no, I'm just going for lunch, and I'm going home right after that. <clears throat> and we couldn't get a ticket for Stanley, so he's not here. He's at home enjoying the easy life. But uh, I did get a few... Uh, topics from Heather to try and discuss, and I'll make it as quick as I can here. A brief story of your CKD and offer of a living donor transplant. Well, uh, of course, it all starts with kidney disease, and I knew nothing about kidney disease until I was impacted by it. And the cause kind of relates back to something that a lot of guys my age and younger, and Tom, I see we're seriously outnumbered here. My goodness. <laughs> this is... Uh, relates more to men than women, but uh, up in our part of the country, the fences are a long ways apart, and our cattle range on crown land that covers thousands of acres, and there used to be an old saying that uh, you could ride, the gates are about a mile apart, and you could ride your horse for through three gates before you had to get off, and uh, how can I put this delicately, uh, take a leak, <laughs> I guess so. Uh, that was kind of the norm, and then as you get older, I found out that uh, it was maybe only one gate before I had to get off, and then a little later, it was, I had to get off three times before I got to the next gate in less than a mile, and it was uh, benign prostate hypoplasia, which is so common, the uh, enlarged prostate gland that was cutting off the supply to my bladder, and eventually impacted my kidneys, and I was in denial until I finally got the blood tests, and my kidney function was down about one or two. And all of a sudden, the uh, fast track kicked in, and uh, I was taken into the hospital. The first thing they did is put in a urinary catheter, and that really did relieve a lot of the pressure. The next thing they did was install a perm cath, and the next thing I knew, I was having my first dialysis run at uh, Royal Inland Hospital. And uh, my blood pressure dropped as soon as that finished, and I passed out, and they called all the emergency people, and I woke up with an oxygen mask, and I was looking up into... I think Bree was the nurse there, Marcy, at that time. And I guess I was unresponsive for, I don't know, three or four minutes or something, but they said, you better stay in overnight. So the next thing they did is put me in a wheelchair. And guys, if this ever happens to you and your wife is pushing the wheelchair, don't let that catheter bag get caught in the spokes. I mean, <laughs> that's uh, something you got to watch for. But anyway, <clears throat> I was uh, all of a sudden on the list for a transplant and I read all the literature, found out that that means you have to spend possibly three months in Vancouver. Well, of course, we know what accommodation costs in Vancouver, and we're looking at something like $200 a night or more. I mean, uh, I'm just a poor broadcaster and a poor rancher. Somebody said, I know you're a poor broadcaster, I've heard you. But, uh, <laughs> but we thought, what are we going to do? We don't have any relatives. We don't know anybody in Vancouver to stay with, and then the... Uh, Social worker told us about the kidney suites, so we applied, and man, oh man, that was so nice to know that if a transplant came up, that was a possibility. And I guess about two and a half years after being on dialysis, and uh, actually I was fortunate because I was what they called no loss. So they didn't take any fluid off, and I could jump out of the chair and go back to work normally after my four-hour run. And uh, I just can't say enough about the support crew and everybody that, uh, that kind of gets you through that. The living donor stepped up and said, no, I've got a, two kidneys. I don't need two. I want you to know I'm giving one away. If we're a match, I want you to have it. If not, I'm giving it away anyway. And uh, so it turned out after much testing, we were a match. And he was a, kind of a colleague of mine in the broadcast business. And we went down November 22nd last year, and we terrorized everybody on the transplant ward at VGH until they sent him home. They said, we can't handle the two of you here at the same time. And we moved into the kidney suite. It says, uh, describe the kidney seat. It says, moved right in from the hospital with his wife. That's uh, Heather's notes. That was my wife I moved in with there. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> But uh, I'll tell you, we were somewhat stressed in that situation. You know, i just come out of surgery, and I didn't know exactly what to expect. But uh, it's really, in my case, not that bad at all. And we got to the suite, and uh, oh my gosh, it was just amazing. Everything we needed. It uh, had a big screen TV with all the sports channels, so I never missed a Canucks game. The World Juniors were on at that time. Had great Wi-Fi, so I was able to carry on business. Uh, right from the time we moved into the suite. And I've done this syndicated radio show for about uh, 27 years now, 
Been a bit of a challenge to keep it going, but I had enough shows recorded ahead of time that I thought, okay, if I can get by two weeks, I can do that. So this was probably a week and a half after we moved into the suite and putting another show together. I actually have a few CDs of that program that I produced in the suite uh, for uh, a few folks who would like them. Just, well, you don't have to listen to them. You can use them for coasters to put your drinks on if you like or <laughs> make targets. But anyway, with a great Wi-Fi in the suite at Steve's Manor, it was certainly possible to, to carry on business. So I think I produced five programs all together while we were there. And uh, Steve's Manor is uh, kind of at West Point Gray, and it's about a three or four minute walk from Jericho Beach. And uh, that was just a real lifesaver. I mean, we we're used to wide open spaces and uh, big country and a long ways from neighbors. And here we are in almost downtown Vancouver, totally out of our element, but within three or four minutes, we're walking along those beautiful hiking paths, we're watching the ships walk out to the big dock and watch all the crab fishermen bringing in their catches and everything. And that was just a huge lifesaver for us. And I think we walked just about every day, rain or shine. And uh, another nice thing about it, it was uh, just about a two block walk to uh, a no frills grocery store where you could go pick up absolutely anything you needed. You know, there's a microwave, a stove and an oven in the suite. Not a lot of restaurants really close, a couple of fast food places, but we were just so comfortable in there. And a balcony, we could look out over the uh, courtyard and see all the other people. <clears throat> and uh, the amenities were, were just terrific. Once I got my perm cath removed, uh, I hadn't been able to go into a hot tub or a swimming pool or anything for almost three years. So the first thing I said to my wife, Billy, the day I got my perm cath removed, I said, it says there's a pool room down there. Let's go down and enjoy the pool room. So we put our bathing suits on and took our towels and walked in the door. And there's all these guys with long sticks in their hands pushing balls around on a big green table. <laughs> but anyway, we did figure out what that was all about, and we did enjoy some, uh, <laughs> you know, some, some games of pool, and she beat me just about every time we played, but she's a, a quick learner. Uh, yeah, our 50, what is it, our 56th anniversary is coming up in April, and... She has just been the rock through all of this. I wish she was here right now. But she took me to the airport this morning, and we've been texting back and forth because people say, you know, we see you two walking along holding hands on Jericho Beach and everywhere you go when you're downtown. How come you do that? And I just say, well, simply, if I let go, she goes shopping. <laughs> and she turned around and said, yeah, and if, if I let go, he gets lost. And, and that's absolutely true. But, uh, so the Steve's Matter Suite was great. I don't think we ever did get to meet Steve, but uh, we really did enjoy it. And the cost, I mean, my goodness, $25 a month compared to $200 a night. Uh, like, there's no way we could have done that. You know, I don't know how we would have actually managed. We might have had to turn down the transplant or something. So uh, I just can't say enough about... Uh, the fundraising that provides something like uh, the kidney suites for the patients, because you're under a fair bit of stress when this is going on. And at least that's one thing that you know is looked after and it's covered and it, it takes a lot of stress away. And as far as the recovery and coming back home, well, that was just fine. I actually, in much as we did enjoy being there, we were so anxious to get home. We actually were able to get home for three days just before Christmas. And uh, Dr. Johnson, the nephrologist uh, at Vancouver General, was just so great. And she said, all right, she's got a beautiful Irish brogue when she talks. And she says, all right, son, I will let you go home under two conditions, that you don't go skiing and you don't get on a horse. <laughs> and so we agreed to that, flew home for three days, and then got back again for the next month. And then after we got home and uh, things were going well, I had told all the wonderful uh, dialysis staff that uh, kept us going through all this uh, situation that we wanted to have a bit of a celebration. So I can't remember the date. Anyway, a beautiful Sunday afternoon in June, we had all the nurses and their families and uh, all, a couple of the doctors and the technical staff and the support crew and the clerks up to the ranch, and I brought my band out, and we inflicted pure Western cowboy music on them for about two and a half hours. And that must not have been too bad because they were even dancing around the yard there. But... Uh, <laughs> It was just so important, I think, to let folks like this know how much what you do means to the patients. I mean, you do that job every day without complaint, and I know you feel it's a, maybe it's, it's a labor of responsibility and a labor of love, but you have no idea how much your support 
means to the patients. And that goes for the entire staff, not just the ongoing medical advice and the treatments and everything, but the emotional support. When you have questions, and you have so many questions, you don't know what the answers are. What are the outcomes? And everybody is just there to, to listen and uh, offer suggestions or just be there as kind of a sounding board. So we, we just can't pour, thank you folks enough for that. So I could just sum that up by saying that the, uh, the kidney suite and the rest of the kidney suites are just uh, a wonderful addition to everything else the Kidney Foundation does and we just can't possibly thank them enough and uh, anything we can do to help the Kidney Foundation, boy, that's what we wanna do now. If you have questions, you can either, I guess, come up and ask them here or, or whatever. Any questions? How's your health now? I am so fortunate, Heather, because uh, I felt good while I was on dialysis. And I was saying to Marcy and the other nurses, boy, I hope I feel this good after the transplant. But I think especially in the last three or four months, I, I felt even that much better all the way around. Uh, you know, the appetite is completely back. The energy is like it was, gosh, eight or nine years ago or more than that. So generally, no, I, and I, I feel absolutely thankful and grateful for sure. Didn't you just organize an annual cruise? Well, yeah, uh, this was uh, something through the radio program that we've done for, we have our 18th annual coming up. And Billy and I host a group of uh, up to 200 of our listeners on a cruise somewhere once a year. And most of them are agricultural people, old cowboys like me, and ranchers, and farming people, and horse and cattle people, and other people that just kind of enjoy that lifestyle. So our 17th one just uh, concluded about three weeks ago when we did the Maritimes in New York City. Uh, and I was actually riding a horse along the beach on Prince Edward Island. And I don't think we left any of our group in New York, so that was great. But <laughs> two years before that, about six months after I started on dialysis, uh, we had a Mexican Riviera up into the Sea of Cortez organized. And I thought, oh man, I think we might have to cancel this. And we already had over 100 people booked with their deposits and everything. And so Billy and uh, Carla, the social worker at RIH, looked into it and they said, you know, you can do dialysis at your ports of call in Mexico. And doing dialysis in Mexico is a bit of an adventure. <laughs> you know, it's a $100 taxi ride to the ship from the ship to the facility. And the facilities are quite different. The hospitals do it all the time and they have up to maybe 24 stations. But there are a couple of little clinic, or little hospital medical stations where they would have one dialyzer and one chair. And they would call in the auto mechanic from across the street to run the dialysis machine when you got there. <laughs> but the biggest scare we got was in, uh, I think it was in La Paz. And I'd done the four hour run and everything had gone fine. You go in there, you don't speak a word of English or they don't speak a word of English. I speak absolutely no Spanish. You sign 40 pages of documents. Before they start, you've got no idea what you're signing. <laughs> and then they start the treatment, and uh, they're talking to each other in Spanish, wondering what it's all about. Anyway, it went all right. And then Dr. Jesus Pinto, the nephrologist, came in. He spoke fairly reasonable English. He's holding out his hand because he wants to get paid for the treatment. <clears throat> so I took out my credit card, and he scanned it on his phone, <clears throat> I signed it with my fingernail, and he said, I will email your receipt. <clears throat> so the next day, we got back to the ship, and there's the receipt from Dr. Jesus Pinto. $9,000. That's what I said. <laughs> Almost a coronary. Until it dawned on us, it was actually 9,000 pesos. <laughs> so, but really, you know, it was clean, and it was sanitary, and uh, I didn't pick up any infections, and it did keep me going, so that was the, the part of it. So. Well, thanks so much for telling your story, Keith. I'm happy that you're doing so well. Well, thank you for having me, Heather, and as I said, <laughs> the Kidney Foundation just deserves everything we can possibly offer to it. Where can people look at their info? Oh, okay, I should have brought some business cards. <laughs> Uh, you can go to our website, which is hugh mclennancom and it streams on demand in about three different platforms. If you go to my Facebook icon, the last two years of programs are there. It's also on, it's not on any radio stations down here. Several in the lower mainland, the Peace River country, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Wyoming, and uh, South Dakota, places like that. But uh, streaming, and e you can even download it and use it as a podcast if you like, so it's just... Hugh-McLennan.com.
Thank you.